it's March 28th and I'm going to do a video interview with Sean Murphy in Texas. We're going to talk about the coronavirus and how Texans are dealing with it. So here's Sean Murphy. Um, I'll introduce you. You're Sean. You were, you're a medic and you said you're pre-med as yes. well, right? Yeah, which doesn't yeah. really give me too much, you know, doctoral credibility, but definitely have my mind in medicine a bit. Yeah, and you have experience dealing with medical stuff in as a combat medic or something like that, right? Definitely, yeah. Combat medicine is a bit of a fast-paced uh, medical activity for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly trauma, less less uh, medical stuff. Um, Definitely. Because I have a little experience in that too, so it's mostly so the 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 and you're in the U.S., right? Yeah, I'm in the U.S. I'm in yeah, Texas. Yeah. I'm a Texas yeah. boy. Yeah, I like Texas. I was down there a couple of years ago. I liked it. Wasn't there long enough to really enjoy it, but I, people were like super friendly. Yeah, there's this impression that, yeah, there's this impression that Texans are all a bunch of rednecks and stuff. And I was like, that's not the impression I had when I was down there. So, varies from location to location. Oh, does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool then. Well, I want to get down there again, but I'm banned from the States now. So, yeah, I'm trying to not get to that same level. <laughs> well, you live there, so you're good. So, yeah, for now, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just uh, talking to people and trying to find out how the virus is affecting them personally, how it's affecting their community, uh, how it's affecting the country, and what the country and the, the community and the local authorities are doing to treat it. Are people taking it seriously? Things like that. So whatever okay. you can tell me about what's happening around you would be great to hear. Okay, fantastic. Really, I mean, to start out with, you know, in my own household right now, you know, we have about four people inside and one person is still working and the other three are not. And we're all essentially just sort of trapped in the house. We've, we've been here for about three weeks now. I actually had a super bad case of strep, so I was self-isolating on purpose even before this happened because I didn't want to spread that on top of anything else. Uh, and yeah. there's, there's a general anxiety in the household. Everyone's definitely chain smoking on the porch and, uh, you know, <laughs> we're not leaving unless we desperately have to. And I think it's a good good precaution and there's a bit of paranoia but i think it's i'd rather be safe than sorry yeah 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 do you have like a designated shopper yeah it's me i feel like i'm like getting ready for fallout 5 and put on all this like post-apocalyptic gear to just go get some milk and eggs you know <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. the toilet paper shortage is definitely a thing we almost have like armed guards guarding that stuff and whenever it's available it's just like a mad dash to the grocery store to get it and it's oh, yeah it's yeah yeah time it's a I'm time actually like my... no one's ever seen before, that's for sure. For sure. I'm in my car right now because I'm actually on the hunt for toilet paper. And Good I luck. ordered <laughs> a few stores and I'm not finding it anymore. But I'm looking at like other things like, oh, well, they have lots of paper towels. I wonder how that well that flushes down the toilet. But... Just got to chop it yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, But it's still, it's a pain. It's totally weird. Like what's happened to us in this. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's surreal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's I like a movie. It's so surreal that people are sort of, they're scared, but it's kind of like when an animal has like, an animal's been bitten and it's in someone else's mouth and it's going to just kind of freeze up. And that's what it does. Yeah. I've noticed a lot of people in my area, they're, they're terrified, but they're still sort of going about their normal day. And I think it's causing a lot more harm than good because they're sort of like being negligent, I think. And it's causing some issues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately, we we have to still live, you know, we still need to eat and, and, you know, if we can make money and stuff like that. So Definitely. in a way, it's kind of like a war zone. I remember my, I had a, a friend who was telling me about when the, the Lebanese civil war was going on and there, you know, one street in the city, there'd be a huge fire fight and then street over there having a wedding, right? Cause life still mm -hmm. has to go on, but you know, that was war. It's different. It's not like you can just get killed by breathing, you know, yeah. where here it's what it's become, right? You breathe the wrong air and next thing you know, you're sick. So Mm -hmm. uh, so would, do you live in would, the city or the country i'm sort of in between i'm like in between dallas and houston sort of like a satellite town oh yeah and, yeah uh, we've got a population of about thirty thousand. we actually had our first confirmed case i think two or three days ago and everything since then sort of been a bit odd as you can yeah. imagine you know, yeah yeah are, yeah I don't, I don't even know what to say about my local predicament there's like quarantine parties and old people seeing everybody and it's a, it's bizarre <laughs> I read, I read some statistic that it seems like the older generation are the ones who are taking it less seriously. Yeah, and I think it's because of it's the weird. availability of information because, you know, even even some of my friends' parents, you know, I see their Facebook posts and it's a bunch of, like, super fake-ish COVID-19 news that's like, oh, you know, the cure is this malaria drug or my blood pressure medicine cures it. So they, they go and they're just like, well, I'll just go see everybody since we're all locked down. I'll just go visit everyone. And it's like, 
the the worst thing they could possibly be doing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the, our generation is kind of immune to the misinformation because we're used to that sort of thing. But the elderly generation who is like most affected by this are definitely being highly misinformed. And it, yeah. there's misinformation coming from the top, even as much as I like hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist. There's just a general neglect, I think, in America right now. And we're it about does... to pay for it. We're now the epicenter of the pandemic. So. Yeah, yeah, it does seem a little, a lot of mixed signals coming from, you know, the president is saying one thing, the, the, what, what do you guys call the chief medical, is it chief medical officer or whatever it is? Like he's yeah. saying something else. Yeah, the, yeah the, the main guy in charge, I think he's the director of like, something, FEMA? something in disease. Yeah. And he's, he's really on top of it. And I think kind of Trump maybe even needs to give him the reins a little bit on this one. Cause it's not it's not a political thing, you know, like right now, COVID-19 is the president, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. And it's important yeah, yeah. to get, you know, top scientists to take care of the situation, not so much politicians, because that's not what we need. But that's just my two cents. Well, that, that's that's completely logical, though. Like, you know, you leave you leave the war to the generals and you leave the epidemics, the pandemics to the doctors and things exactly. like that. Yeah. And I've yeah, noticed yeah. this like gradual progression, like when it was still just in China, I remember hearing quotes from Donald Trump and like, I'm, I'm completely politically neutral. So I'm not left or right. And I just like observing the situation. But he said at the beginning, he said, this is not going to touch us soil. A few weeks later, all of a sudden we have six deaths, but it's going to be okay to the next quote was pretty much just like, I didn't cause this and I don't know what's going on. And I was like, okay. Yeah. But yeah. I think we're just having a leadership issue right now. And it's sort of causing mass panic and just a general lack of care. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's defi definitely a lack of leadership there. Like, yeah, yeah and, and responsibility too. Yeah, totally. Biden just put out a campaign video where he was taking all these sound bites of Trump contradicting himself and stuff like that. <laughs> it was yeah, actually it was kind of funny to watch. Yeah, yeah. So, is there, are, like in your town, are they setting up anything in case there's like a, a you know, if the curve gets pretty high there? What, what, is there places to put people? Or is there treatment? Is there going to be enough ventilators? Yeah, the issue with it, you know, and a lot of people are, uh, there's a lot of like conspiracy theories about testing and like how there's a lack of availability of it. But it is just a matter of like, we were not prepared for this. Nobody was. We weren't warned and we were told that it was pretty much going to be okay. And that trickles down to all of the medical supply and personnel we have available. So now it's sort of like, even in my local area, now that we have our first case, we're, we're all scrambling together to kind of throw together like a preparation for what's to come, especially since, you know, now that things are starting to trickle down into more rural areas like where I'm at. And um, I mean, people are decently prepared, I would say, you know, we're definitely on the use one mask a day for the medical professionals right now. And that's getting super scary. And people are making masks and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. As far as us being ready for it. Mm, yes, and no, we don't know what to expect is the thing. And it's definitely yeah, not, yeah. we're not we're not. What is it flattening the curve at all? It's just skyrocketing. And it's because people are just running around and going to quarantine parties and crawfish boils. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's too bad, yeah. though. That's, yeah. And then who's in charge of FEMA now? Do you know? Good question. Because FEMA doesn't exactly have a good track record of handling these kinds of things. I mean, they hooched Katrina there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, back then, I think the director, his previous experience was judging equestrian horse competitions or something like that. So <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on now. So. I'd rather have them than not, though, just for the sake of logistics and supply chain, because they can bring in supplies and, you know, just they're they're next to useless, but they're not completely useless. You know, everyone has, yeah, yeah. Everyone has a good position to play it's, here. It's better than nothing. Exactly. Right? But I can't help but think that the military would be able to get the equipment out a lot quicker. Yeah. But, because I mean, when it comes to the U.S. military, they know how to move things quickly. Yeah. It's yeah, super yeah. apparent that people are worried that especially in the U.S. because, you know, the whole boogaloo thing, you know, big igloo right now. Whenever people see troops on the streets, we think that this is now, like, big government ah. coming down on us. And normally, whenever the government would step in and say something like, everyone stay in your homes, you know, we're on lockdown, I would be one of the first people that would be like, hey, okay, no, we're not going to do that. But it's important to know that the World Health Organization and NGOs are calling for isolation and not so much the government. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's what's important to note. So when they do send troops down, there's going to, I can almost guarantee you, uproar and panic and probably riots, even if they're just distributing food. And it's kind of a shame. But And I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong with a lot of this stuff. But we'll see. Maybe maybe calmer heads will prevail and people will see it for what it is. You know, they're not here to control us. They're here to help us. So. Yeah. And I've been yeah. seeing, like, caravans of people riding around town, like, raiding stores and stuff. So I want to say that the probability of a 
calm, cool head is very, very slim right now. What do you really like? What do you mean yeah. raiding stores? Like breaking people, into them, or because like my town is, you know, it's it's a few hours out of Dallas and Houston. People are coming from those bigger cities, and they're just like they're coming in these big caravans of just like angry dudes in trucks, and they just come in and just buy everything out of the grocery stores and tear out of there and head to another town. And it, it left us with absolutely nothing. Our grocery stores were empty for like a week and a half. Oh yeah. my god! So people yeah, are yeah. not handling it the way they should. <laughs> Oh no, yeah. I've been hearing the same thing. You're not not where people swarm it like like what you just described, but um it seems that some of the outlying towns in the interior of BC here, they have they're getting less supplies because it's all being allocated to the city. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, so like the triaging of supplies, you know, the same with testing. Every the big cities are going to get the most supplies and the most medical equipment first. And I, yeah, I, yeah. I believe that's a good thing. It's a necessary evil. You know, my town will suffer for it, but it's for the better. Yeah, but you know, when you're in a little town too, you also have the opportunity. You people know how to hunt generally in little towns, and they can oh, go. Yeah. Food gets a oh, little scarce. You go put down a <laughs> boar or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we've been yeah, making yeah. jokes about the local squirrels lately, and making squirrel hamburger helper and things like that. And, really? I've yeah. never had squirrel. I wanted to try it though. I heard it's pretty decent. So. Yeah, I haven't tried it either. It might come down to it though. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You never know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, squirrel or snake. I, I hear snake's pretty tasty, so. Oh, man. I haven't gotten quite that exotic. If it gets to that point, I think we have a lot of other things to worry about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like Red Dawn, but it won't be a foreign army. It's just, a, you know, a right. virus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it does feel a little bit kind of, I was, I was actually asking, like, an older lady about that earlier, like, can you compare the situation we're in now where we're kind of being isolated and told to stay inside and things like that to more like way back in the like Vietnam war times when they had bomb threats and things like that, you know, aerial bombings, you said it is equally scary. You know, wow. I thought that, that was a really valid perspective because that's someone who's lived through both things. And to them, it war feels like war, you know, it's a, it's an attack on the home front and it's terrifying, you know, for a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. 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 There's it makes sense. Big, big air of, you know, I can walk in Walmart and just, feel the anxiety and panic of everyone and everyone's wearing masks and staying 10 feet away from each other. Yeah. 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 It's interesting how it's affecting everybody. I noticed that uh, we're all kind of suffering through it. So there's, it kind of brings a little bit of unity, totally, but at the yeah. same time, you still, you still get these people who are like hoarding stuff and, you know, yeah. things like that. So it might get a little cutthroat at times. So yeah. Despite yeah. all the negativity of like the hoarding and the people's attitudes and misinformation, you know, like, just traveling and riding my motorcycle around town the past few days and seeing people, you know, from a distance, of course, when I go and get my groceries and stuff, people are just incredibly nice and courteous and everyone is just trying to help each other and like pay for each other's groceries. And it's, it, it's an interesting thing to witness, you know, it is, it yeah. is, it's and, history. Yeah. And, it, the sound and when you consider like, there's, there's pretty much nobody alive today that remembers the last pandemic. Exactly. So this, this is, is, the, this is a defining us. moment of our time for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, and it sounds a little far-fetched to say and maybe i kind of sound like a dirty feminist hippie in a way but this virus almost if you look at it like from another perspective it has a bit of like a feminine characteristic and it seems like if this isn't some like highly engineered biological attack from china or god knows what you know if it is just a natural occurrence and it is doing what it's doing the social repercussions of it is it is bringing people closer together and it's every mom i know wants to bring their kids home right now and have them in their homes and what it's doing is it's giving the world and people time to just like relax and repair and rebond because we've we've completely lost touch with nature and we're just we've completely lost touch with our own families you know and i think by social distancing and staying home you know we can increase our family ties and beat this thing hopefully but you know yeah, it might be completely crazy and it's just a chinese biological attack and we're all going to die but it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> what do i know for a chinese biological it's weapon it, it, it's not working out so well because it's killed a lot of Chinese too, right? So yeah. from a from a strategic point of view, it doesn't make any sense. So exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so. If it is nature, but some I people think will, it's a way some to people will believe that's what it is. Down. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, so how's Texas in general handling? it? Just like Texas would, hard headed as hell. Yeah, yeah. I ain't getting no coronavirus. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Texas is handling it okay. Not as good as California. I mean, California is a lot worse off, but they it's the leadership. You know, California really, they saw what was about to happen and they caught it really well, whereas Texas is sort of just 
getting hit by a flood right now and we're just sort of reacting instead of being prepared for it and that's about to it's gonna bite us in the ass here soon hopefully not but it, if it does it will hit hard oh yeah, yeah 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 do you know the numbers for texas right now no good question let's see if i can look it up real fast i do not oh, i can't get those right now oh well they're not they're not too bad but we're definitely you know we're not as bad as new york and we're not as bad as california but we're, we're probably ranking number three right now in, in number of cases so we're actually not we're not doing the best, but we're not doing the worst either. Well, if it uh, if it gets bad and you are not sick and you want to make a run for the Canadian border, just let me know and I'll send someone there to pick you up. Right? Oh man, it'll be like one of those apocalypse movies. We just got to keep going north. You know, we got to get to that Canadian border because that's apparently always where sanctuary is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. The Canadians yeah. know what's up, man. Why yeah. Do you, think you guys have so few cases where we have so many. Can you? Well, part of the that? reason. Part of the reason is because we have Medicare here, right? So, like, I think a lot of Americans might be afraid to go to the hospital because they're afraid of being handed a $1,000 bill. Yeah, the hospitals are empty right now. Yeah, are they? Yeah. So we're here. We, we go to the hospital for, like, frivolous things because we can because it's free, right? We're, we're not going to get a huge bill for it. So um, even, like, an ambulance ride here is, like, if they bill you, it's usually at the most $75. Wow. You know? Yeah. That's, like, six like, short of ours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've heard. It's crazy. Just for riding the ambulance. I was in one, one year, I think 23rd, in a 14-month period, I was in five ambulances, you know? Wow. Had I been in the States, I would have been bankrupt. So <laughs> Yeah, they would have put you in debt for the rest of your life. Just yeah, yeah. Just in the hospital till you die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, so I think that's part of the reason why we're handling it, you know, pretty decent here. Also because we're such a big country and we're still fairly spread out population-wise. Right. We're along the southern edge. But I mean, like, it's a long ways to get from Vancouver to the next major city, right? So yeah, I think sense. there's more opportunity to control the movement of it. Gotcha. Right? We're in, this, in the States, you can pretty much go in any direction and you're a huge population. What is like 370 million Americans, I think, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Canada's like 37 million, you know, mm -hmm. and we're the second biggest country in the world. So, yeah, we're pretty spread out. So oh, I think that's, okay. def that's definitely helping us, too, for gotcha. sure. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we're also, Americans seem more, like you were saying, more defiant against orders from the government, right? Just, about say, just, just the fact that they said, don't do it. Everyone did it. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Literally, the day they declared for everyone to stay inside, I took a drive down and every park was full of families. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Man, this is going to be a yeah, rough yeah. ride. Here, like, you know, the right. prime minister comes on and he says, you know, hey, everyone stay home. Don't worry. We're going to set you up. We're going to take care of you financially and everything. You know, nothing to worry about. No one's going to lose their house or stuff like that. And everyone's just like, all right, I had to get vacation. I'm going home. And yeah. it seemed to seem to work, right? So yeah. hopefully yeah. it stays that as, way then. As much as I hate to say it, like I absolutely love my country and love America, but we we're handling it just as mad just as you would imagine we would, just kind of with like a dumb arrogance. You know, like we're gonna beat this thing, it's gonna be fine. Meanwhile, we actually don't know. It could be fine, they could be right, and I hope I'm wrong. You know? Yep. Or well, I imagine in the end you guys will beat it. In the end you guys will beat it, but I imagine the numbers and I can't help but feel that the, the American medical insurance companies are actually hindering it because somebody's going to want to have to pay for all this. And the insurance companies are like, well, we don't want anything to do with it. It's not, you know, this is not our fault. This is not a condition that's in any of the contracts and stuff. So then mm -hmm. the government's going to have to start paying the bills and stuff like that. And I imagine that might cause some problems, too. Yeah, this is definitely a test of capitalism as well. You know, you can look at like those aspects of it where you see how well capitalism responds to it in good and bad ways. Like. We yeah. have the issue with insurance and medical fees and things like that, but at the same time, we have a really, really strong supply chain, but it's also the moment that that supply chain has a kink, it's broken. But in total, mm -hmm. it's incredibly efficient, and that's what you call the soft underbelly of democracy, so to speak. So, I mean, it's got upsides and downsides. Upsides, we don't have toilet paper. Or downside, we don't have toilet paper. Upside, it's on its way really fast. You know? Yeah. Downside, that's what they, say. they run out of gas, no toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can make toilet paper, but if nobody's willing to drive the truck to deliver it, then it's kind of yeah, like, right. yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll yeah. bust out those little like jars or jugs we used to use for bidets in the Middle East, man. I'm not afraid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've I've done it. You've done it. So to us, it's like, well, you know, I'll just go back to eating with this hand and. Oh yeah. Hey, I know my yeah. way around a wet wipe, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and, and rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I bought it when I was in Syria. I spent maybe the first three months like hoarding the little baby, the wet wipes, you know, the little ones yeah, you could get totally. there. And every time I'd see a store, I had somebody go in and buy like four or five of them. And I had them in my pockets on my pants. But after a while, it's just like they started to get scarce. And then after a while, I couldn't find them at all. And like, well, I don't want to start using my socks. So you just kind of learn to go with it, right? You yeah, just don't use your left hand for anything else. And just don't ever look at it ever again. And it'll be okay. <laughs> Yeah. But mind you, the squat seems to be a cleaner way of doing it anyway. So I agree. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes that water, you know, that's that water can be pretty cold. And yeah. I mean, you know who doesn't have a toilet paper shortage is China, just saying. <laughs> well, do they I use toilet paper there? I don't know. I think they squat there too. Oh, they squat, yeah. Back when I went there, that was my first experience with the squatty potty. I walked into this super nice classy bathroom and I was like, Oh crap. I, out. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I saw one of those. I was just like, oh man, I've made a mistake coming. <laughs> wow. We cleared this one village uh, in this one village. It was an ISIS village, but we cleared it. And then as we're searching the houses for, you know, stuff, for intel and stuff like that, we found a washroom and it had like a squat, but it also had a Western toilet in it. Oh, man. And I was just like, oh, I'm totally hitting that. Yeah. <laughs> Not right now because I don't have to go. But when I do, I'm coming back and I'm going to. So then like, you know, later in the day, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go use this, use the Western toilet. And they went, went, I went back there and they had smashed it. Oh, man. And I was just like, why? And they're like capitalism. And like, it's a toilet. That's the worst. Oh, I was so mad. It's like, yeah. you bastards. Yeah. All I needed, just the one thing. And, oh. Destroy all the things that are good. Yeah. 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 I made a toilet once. I took a plastic chair and I cut a hole in the center of it and I hung, a piece of, <laughs> I hung a piece of stove pipe on it. And, and then I was trying to explain to my commander what it was, you know, and she's like, oh, yeah, my grandmother uses one of those, too. I was like, what the hell? Is that a shot at my age? Bitch. What? <laughs> <laughs> man, oh, well, I good do times. miss it, though, man. I wish I was over there every day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that, too, sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's because of the sense of purpose, right? You had purpose over yeah. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it looks like, and you might want to speak to some of the friends over there, but it looks like they're getting their first cases and they're starting to get real worried. And... I spoke with somebody this morning. I have a, and I have, I'm doing an interview with uh, someone tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. So, good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gian know, set me up with someone. Good. I know something yeah. else as well. I was checking the Syrian uh, Civil War live map, and it is like a ghost town, except for some random rebel activity down in the south. It seems like the, the virus has even stopped almost i'm not gonna say stop but definitely s- drastically slowed down the civil war over there and like the turkish invasion looks like it's just flatlined for a couple of days for some reason or it just didn't update but it looks like maybe it's even having an impact over there which hopefully allow people in rojava to focus on their medical situation right now yeah yeah well i was talking with with one of the medics there this morning and she was saying that turkey is still bombing them really <clears throat> wow yeah okay. so, so maybe it is just a matter of uploading information Maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe the guy who does the map is sick. Oh, God. Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah it's too bad. But, yeah, I'm going to be, hopefully be doing a couple of interviews tomorrow from there. Hopefully. Cool. One yeah, sure. Well, you can. Yeah. I hate that I had to offer kind of like a nonsensical, bleak opinion of the American predicament, but it is what it is. You yeah, know, yeah. We'll, we'll get on top of it. It's just people, people aren't used to seeing that. They've never experienced something like this in their life. So as much as I want to just, like, grab them by their throats and, like, shove education down their throats, you know, I have to just be nice and realize that people aren't used to this. They've never experienced this, you know, and it is scary and nobody knows what the hell's going on. So, you know, you can't judge people for acting irrationally. You know, we had a yep. guy who just yesterday, he came to come, you know, we were holding his motorcycle over here in the garage and he came to ride it and he's approaching the back porch and, you know, this lady's screaming, stop, 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 you know, like before we shoot, basically. And he's like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, my blood pressure medicine cures it apparently. And, you know, this new malaria drug is curing it. So and he starts getting on the porch and this lady is about to just like, she's like a cat in a box trying to get out of there, you know, and like, oh, it's wow. just, yeah, it's an interesting time with just a mixture of really good information, really bad information, and some really misinformed elderly people and some really neglectful young people who are just like, yep. I'll be fine. I don't care. You know, I, I personally know a friend of mine. He's a, he's kind of a big pothead, so he's a bit not reputable, but he doesn't care. He's like, I'll just get it. I'll be fine. You know, whatever. I'm going to live my normal life. And he doesn't realize that, you know, he can infect his grandma or his grandfather yeah. or someone else's elderly people, you know. And yeah, It's a messy situation in America right now. We'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. 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 The young people especially have to think of them, someone else other than themselves, though. Yeah. Good it seems luck. to be a pretty common, like, 
mentality among the 20 somethings anyway so mm -hmm. tell them anything they know everything so yeah people know. need to realize immunity isn't really only about your immunity you know if you hoard all the germex and nobody else has it you're still going to get the virus because everyone else has it yeah yeah sort of thing but Crazy. That's, that's pretty much it for that front good luck yeah. everybody else you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and you never know, this might come back later in life, kind of like shingles is, you know, connected to chicken pox. Who knows? Yeah. Like 30 years, like all these kids that didn't get sick now, like 30 years from now, their dicks are falling off or whatever, something like that. Right. You never know. Yeah. Like that, that Dean Koontz book that was going around that was, uh, I don't know if you ever saw that, but it had the thing talking about COVID-19 coming out of Wuhan in 2020. And then 10 years later, it'll make a, it'll make a really serious comeback and then fade away. And I was like, oh, really? yeah, yeah. Look it up. Just Google uh, Dean Koontz uh, coronavirus. And I'm sure it'll pop up a little excerpt of uh, of the book, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, hopefully that is not an omen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. I, oh, crazy! I'll have to watch The Simpsons because you know they get all the predictions right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. All right, Sean. Well, I think that's good. We were cool. talking for 26 minutes, so thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. That's the most human interaction I've had in days. Let me tell you. Well, hey, anytime you want to talk, just like send me a message again. You know, I, I'm actually really enjoying these interviews and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm getting go for it. I think it's super vital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thanks to Sean for taking the time to talk with me. And uh, I hope you stay safe. Now I'm on the hunt for toilet paper. So wish me luck. <laughs>